Hey guys, welcome back to another video on PS4 Linux. This is Noob404 and today we are going to discuss a much easier and faster method to install PS4 Linux distros. So recently I released both Nobara OS and Pop OS for the PS4. Many of you guys liked it and I thank you all for the huge support and the well wishes that have come from across the world for these distros and stuff. I appreciate it. But many of you guys said that you were not able to install this properly using the method that I had suggested, that is the alternate method which required a Linux, preferably Ubuntu. So today we have a method that could help you install PS4 Linux distros onto your USB drive using Balena Etcher or Rufus. And this will work on any operating system. Whether you have Windows, Linux or Mac, you could do this on any of these systems. Okay. And I would like to thank uh, this user, Evrim. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He asked me if we could do the Gentoo method for these distros. And that's what got me thinking, maybe yeah, it's possible. And two days of time, I figured out a good way to do it. And here we are. So a huge thanks goes out to him too. So now, without further ado, let's just begin with the method. In this particular case, I'm going to be using Windows. As you can see, this is Windows 10. Uh, but this will also work on Mac and Linux OS, as I have already said. So let's just jump straight into the requirements. First of all, you're going to require the distro. So not every distro out there supports this method because for this method to work, the distros have to be packaged in a certain way. As you can see right now on my desktop, I have Pop OS and Nobara, which have been packaged in the way which could help us install these distros using the method that I'm going to talk about in this video. So right now, Pop OS, Nobara and Gen2 support this method. Just keep that in mind. But I promise you that all the future updates to my distros will implement this method alongside the older alternate method too. So in the future, if you want to try any of my new distros, then you could use this Rufus Balena Etcher method for installation. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you could install the distro onto your USB drive using Rufus and Balena Etcher. And after that, I'm going to show you how you could boot into the distro and set up the Linux partition. It's just a one time process, which roughly takes five minutes. Okay. So coming back to the requirements, we need the distro obviously and uh, as you can see, this is the distro Pop OS and this is Nobara. We will be installing Nobara in this tutorial but this also works very well for the Pop OS, I have already tried that. So here we have Nobara. When you download the distro from my website that is ps4linux.com, just make sure that you're downloading the one which has underscore im in its name and which has an extension of img.exe. This is the image that will work with Rufus and Balena Etcher. If you have downloaded the tar.exe image, this won't work. Okay. So make sure that you're downloading the proper image, which has the extension image.exe. Okay. So that was the first requirement. There's a distro itself. And the second requirement is Balena Etcher or Rufus. Both of these softwares work pretty well for this process. But if you are on Windows, I would suggest to go with Rufus. And if you are on Mac or Linux, then uh, Balena Etcher is the option. Okay. And after that, we're going to need the BZ image, that is the kernel and init RAM FS. When it comes to the kernel, that depends on the PS4 model that you have. I have a detailed tutorial on uh, choosing the perfect kernel for your PS4. You can check that in the description. Okay. So these are the files that you would require. All of these have been linked in the description. So go through that. Now let's jump straight into the process. So first of all, I'm going to start Rufus on my system. We're going to be using Rufus for this tutorial, but you could also use Balena Etcher. I'm just going to run you through the steps for each of these if you are completely new to this. But in the end, I'm going to use I'm going to be using Rufus for this. OK, so with the software booted up, we're going to plug the USB drive that we are going to use for this method. Uh, I suggest using an SSD for this because the modern distros require some horsepower for which I don't think an HDD is the perfect option. So if you have an SSD, just use a USB 3.0 connector to connect it to your PC. And once it is connected, I'm going to go to Rufus and make sure that this is date. This is the case if you're using a heavy SSD for say example, say 120 or 180 GB SSD or a 256 GB SSD. This won't show up in your device list until or unless you have this option ticked. Let's just see what happens when I tick this. As you can see, my 180 GB SSD is showing here. Make sure that this is properly set. You don't want to choose the wrong device and wipe it off. And also make sure that you don't have any important information on this USB drive that you're connecting. Okay. And uh, with that out of the way, I'm going to go to boot selection. And uh, here we have select. I'm going to click on select. Go to my desktop where I have the file that is Nobara. Okay. I'm going to click on it and then click open. Now let me show you the same steps on Balena Etcher. First of all, we're going to choose the file. So I'm going to choose flash from file and then I'm going to go to desktop and then choose Nobara open. And as for the target, I'm going to select the target and choose this one, which is 180 GB. It does warn you that this is a large drive. Okay. 
So select it and then all you have to do is click on flash. As I'm on Windows, I prefer using Rufus. As I've already said, we'll be using Rufus for this method. But if you're in Belena Etcher, all you have to do is click on flash and the process will complete. If you face any issues with the validation, Belena Etcher has a property that as soon as it writes the image to the drive, it also validates the drive. If the validation fails, do not worry. Just unplug your drive and uh, boot it up on the PS4. It will work fine, okay? I've tested it. So I'm gonna close Belena Etcher here because we'll be using Rufus. And then back to Rufus now, making sure that the drive and the image and everything is set. Do not change any of these other settings. Let it just uh, stay as it is and then uh, click on start. Okay, so this will give you the warning. Just make sure that you don't have any important information on this drive. This is your last chance to save it. Okay, then click on okay. Okay, this will, uh, this is a warning that might occur on some drives. Just click okay. Okay. And this is going to take some time depending on the speed of your hard drive or SSD. For me, since it is an SSD, it takes roughly like uh, 5 to 10 minutes. So once that is done, we're going to move to the next step. Okay. And the process is complete. It says ready. So I'm going to close it right here. And then I'm going to go to my Explorer. Let's see. Go to here. And as you can see, there are three partitions, but there is not a 50 MB partition. This 50 MB partition should appear here. But in some cases, I've seen that it does not automatically appear. So now I'm going to show you how you could mount that 50 MB FAT32 partition. To do that, press on the Windows icon and R on your keyboard together. So that would start up run. And now type diskmgmt.msc. This would open up the disk management console and then just scroll down here. As you can see, we do have the 50 MB FAT32 partition on this drive that was a 180 GB SSD. Just make sure that you're choosing the proper drive here. And as you can see, this is my 180 GB SSD that I have just written Linux onto. So this is the 50 MB partition that we need to mount on Windows. So what I'm going to do is right click on this 50 MB partition and click on change drive letter and paths and then click on add and then assign the following drive letter. Just make sure that this is a free letter. As you can see, G is free right now. So I'm going to choose that G and then click on OK. And here we have it. OK, so this is mounted. So I'm going to open this folder and then I'm going to go back to my desktop where I have my kernel and init RAM FS image copied. I'm going to copy both of these right onto this FAT32 50 MB partition. And with that, we are completely ready to boot the PS4 Linux distro on our PS4. So I'm going to see you on my PS4 just in a moment, okay? So I'm on my PS4 right now. As you can see, I've already loaded Gold Hen and I also have plugged in the USB drive that we just prepared using Rufus, okay? So I'm going to go back to my web browser and use Caro's host for this process. So I'm going to go to the Linux group of payloads and I'm going to load a 3GB version. Yes. Now the beauty of this method is that you don't have to go to 1GB version for the first installation because that's already done. Okay. So it's just safe for me to just choose the 3GB payload and just get started with gaming. So I'm going to choose that and uh, wait for it to boot. Okay. So here we are on the boot screen of Nobara. So I'm going to choose my username and then just log in. I'm going to be using GNOME for this. So I have selected GNOME and then I'm going to provide the password which is default PS4 on all of my distros. Here we have Nobara loaded and uh, first, the first thing I'm going to do is connect to Wi-Fi. We're going to require that first to set the time properly. As you can see, this is an ancient time. So I'm going to go to Wi-Fi and connect to my Wi-Fi network. And yep, we are connected to Wi-Fi and it's going to take a few minutes for this uh, time to be updated to the correct time. And yep, there we are. It just took a few seconds actually. So now let me show you something. I'm going to go to the file manager. And then I'm going to go to the other locations and go to the root drive of uh, this USB on which we are running Linux. And as you can see, it says that just 1.2 GB is available and that too out of 14.9 GB. But I remember it to be a 180 GB SSD. So where did all of the other space go? That's what we're going to fix. Many of you would remember these steps from the Gento installation. So I'm going to repeat that right here. First of all, we'll have to open a terminal and then install a simple application called Gparted, which is nothing but a simple partition manager for Linux. On Novara, which is a Fedora based distro, 
you will have to install this by typing sudo space dnf space install space gparted if you are on a ubuntu based distro like pop os or ubuntu itself you will have to change this dnf to apt like this and press enter but we are on nobara so we're going to stick with dnf which is the default manager for applications and then press enter to install gparted i'm going to provide the password So gparted has been installed successfully now it's time to start up gparted all you have to do now is type sudo space gparted and press enter provide the password and this would start up the gui that is the interface for gparted and here we are so as you can see this is my 180 gb ssd make sure that this device is properly set because as you can see nobara also mounts the internal hard drive of the ps4 do not select that make sure that your ssd is selected this can be ensured by this because we have a partition called psd touch and we also have a fat32 mb partition which is 50 mb in size okay so once you have made sure that this is a proper drive all you have to do is right click on this partition that is psd touch and then click on resize or move and we're gonna drag this to the extreme right and then click on resize and then to apply all these changes all you have to do is click on this green tick apply now this is going to take some time uh, it took me just literally seconds but if you are an hdd which i do not recommend by the way this will take some time like uh two to three minutes i guess i'm going to close it right here and this one too and the terminal is also now closable just close the terminal and go to activities and then i'm going to go back to my file manager other locations and as you can see 177 GB is being shown as available and 156 GB is free from that 177 GB. So you're now ready to start your gaming or whatever you feel like because I've already shown that this is a pretty good distro for streaming, not the best of course, but uh, you can use, uh, you know, like OBS Studio right here for streaming and, you know, like tinkering with it. I'm sure that with the proper time spent, we could come up with the best settings for you know like the best quality streaming on ps4 that is streaming windows games on ps4 i hope you like this video and i hope you're liking my contributions to the community if you do like my contributions please consider donating if you have some extra money lying around uh, i would really appreciate it it's going to be a great help for me anyways keep supporting the channel i've also started an instagram page you could also follow there and do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already also don't forget to hit that bell button on the way out I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.